Thank you for being here. I'm very grateful. Michael Ozier is going to talk about why Oprah interviewed him four times. <laughs> so I hope you'll enjoy it and you'll be able to connect with Michael as well. My name is Michael. Uh, I'm the author of the book Law of Attraction. I sold 3.7 million copies in 37 languages. And I never had a business card in my entire career. And I never solicited business. But I'm a deliberate attractor. I am a trainer, and uh, I want to welcome everybody to the Rich Women Magazine Club. And uh, Dr. Marina has generously given me my 11 o'clock for the month of December time slot. And uh, for the last three Sundays, we've been talking about resetting your vibe and watching the don't, nots, and no's. And really, that's just the, the place to start. Even before you start using Law of Attraction deliberately, you got to clean up your own vibe. So we talked about that, watching our words, watching our language, who we hang around with, what rooms, just being very protective about our vibe. I didn't create that law. That's the law. Law of attraction says it matches vibrations. The law of attraction is responding to how you feel about what you're reading, writing, talking about, smelling, eating, remembering. It's responding to that vibration. This is the definition of law of attraction. Law of attraction matches vibrations, positive or negative. Huh. Today, we're going to kick it up a notch and talk about deliberate attraction and see who wants to be more of a deliberate attractor today. That means using law of attraction on purpose and deliberately. I'm going to teach you how to do that today in the special edition in the Rich Woman Magazine Club. Thanks for joining there. Dr. Marina will come back and I want to tell me about how her project's going. She's got a great initiative going on. Dr. Marina, I would love for you to tell us about your uh, project that you're working on. And uh, it's such a great contribution. Actually, I'm very, very excited. <laughs> so I think we are in a good place. And I think a lot more people are awakening to, to their true self, to to the desire to give, to feel abundant and generosity, giving is uh, the best way of uh, feeling abundant. Yes. My well, hunch is, is yes. <laughs> yeah, well, I think, I think the part that's fulfilling you is you're, that you're able to combine leadership with passion. And what a sweet spot, right? You found, and so you're being fulfilled by that and you're doing a great job and it does take leadership and pulling the team together and the idea and passionate about the project. Boy, what a marriage those two things are. So congratulations for finding your sweet spot where you can contribute. Thank you so much, Michael. It is true. <laughs> On reflection, I'm thinking everything you are teaching, well, this is what I need to apply more of because changing your vibe changes your result. The more I share, the more my energy to others, <laughs> yes. more and, better you know, things to happen for other people. So, yes. Even sharing the success of this campaign, I'll call it a campaign or project, even sharing that causes you to send the vibration of it, the successful vibration. So it's important to talk about it, to acknowledge it, and it keeps you in the vibration of that. So it's, it, it, it collects its own steam or its own, um, you know, it's like a snowball. It just gets bigger and bigger. Get Pay attention to that. Thank you so much, Michael. Actually, everything you teach is helping me a lot. And I want to enable more people to practice your teaching and benefit from your genius. 2022, we already started to work on this and open these doors for people who never considered <laughs> how important vibration is and um, Thank you. What the, the difference they can make themselves simply yes. by changing their vibe. Um, absolutely grateful. I don't have enough words to thank you for everything you are doing for humanity. Thank you so much, Mike. You're welcome. And it was interesting because when, uh, when Dr. Moreno and I talked, I gave her the title for the first three Sundays. I said, you know, I wanted to make it easy. So she just cut and paste. I said, here's a title. And then for this Sunday, I didn't, I didn't give her a title. And then when I saw this title, it was the first time that Oprah's name was ever used in the title. And I thought, holy s balls, I better be good on this episode here today. So did I answer the question why Oprah interviewed me four times? Now well, can you tell why? Actually, the question is why 
she stopped interviewing you because you become not only the master of law of attraction, but you are a legend. And now would be a good time for her to interview you. I think she's missing out. <laughs> well, it's, it, it's true. Well, there's something else. I'd love to introduce Oprah to the emotion code. The emotion code is where I'm deleting people's negative vibrations. And that is about 10 years behind the whole planet understanding it. But Oprah could speed that up really fast. Just like she did with The Secret, you know, my book came out in 2003, and I was one of the very few books that had the word Law of Attraction in the title. 2003, do you know how long ago that is? Yes, it's almost 19 years. And then The Secret came out in 2006, and it really wasn't until 2009 that everyone started to understand about it because of Oprah. I mean, The Secret was 2006, Oprah was 2009. The planet went crazy with law of attraction. That's when I got the phone call that said, Michael, Oprah would like to interview you to bring some clarity to the subject of law of attraction. And you know what's interesting about the Oprah thing? And I always vibrated that I would want to have conversations with her, but I never, and I'm going to say this without giving attention, but I didn't want to be on the TV show. And that was because of my body size. I was much larger than I am now. And I thought, I can't sit on a couch that fat on the Oprah show and have that be my legacy forever. So I vibrated myself out of the TV show. So boy, the radio show thing is perfect. But um, anyway, I look different now. I have a different body. Everything's law of attraction. Well, it's a good story. You know, I live in a small city and I've been doing seminars here probably since maybe 25 years. I was talking about law of attraction in coffee shops, in bookstores. I would go to church basements. I would go anywhere, anytime. And then I would have people just like on club. I would have people follow me. I said, hey, when's you're doing your next presentation? And people would come out. These were the days when we went in person, you know, 25 years ago. And I would always say to the people, and, and at this time, Dr. Phil, it was called Dr. Phil Tuesday, and I would talk about the audience. I was thinking, and by the way, at this time, the only people that people could relate to about law of attraction would be people like Oprah, right? She would be into this kind of stuff. So I would say, hey, do you think Oprah was gonna love me? And they would say, yes. And I would say, you know what? I'd love to be Michael Mondays. Imagine Michael Loge from Gilligan's Island on the West Coast of Canada dominating the Oprah show on Monday with this message. And I would say, say yes if you're in. And people would laugh. And then as I'm signing books and people say, see, I know, Oprah. And I'm not even kidding you. That went on many times. That went on many times. So I wasn't holding that as a vibration deliberately, but just in the experience about talking about it and having fun with it. And law of attraction doesn't know I was pretending or being funny. It was responding to the vibration that I gave it. Listen, even when I got the first interview, the first request of the interview, I remember thinking, oh, I want to do a two-part series. That's what I said to myself. I want to do a two-part series. So here's what happened. So I go to Van, I live on an island. We didn't have a radio station that had XM access, like satellite radio. So I had to take a float plane because I live on an island. I took an, a seaplane to Vancouver and it was March and it was cold, not snowy cold like the rest of the world, but cold, wet and damp and cold. So I go to the CBC radio station. And I go inside and my friend Sandy, uh, who was kind of my assistant at the time, I was, I was out of nowhere and all of a sudden I was on TV. And Canadian TV and so on. So we go inside the radio station and, you know, we get comfortable and we have something to drink. And then all of a sudden, the, the, the producer in the radio station here, he knocks on the glass and he said, he showed me to put the headset on. And it was Oprah. There was no pre-show. There was no wanting to get to know me. She'd been to my website. She watched my videos. She knew all about me, and you can bet they did their research <laughs> before they got me. I mean, I'm talking probably records, everything. You know, she's pretty careful about all of that. So they knew me well before the interview. So I get on the interview, and there's a little bit of jing – it's being recorded, by the way, but it's very – there's a little bit of jingle music, and then Oprah opens up the show. Hey, welcome to the Soul Series, and she's talking about Law of Attraction. And, and I'm super calm and casual. Before this, I had my own talk radio show for about a year and a half on Voice America. 
and my show was hot. Why? Because I was the only show on Law of Attraction. Now there's hundreds, but at one time, I was the only guy. People were listening to me on Voice America. So I go, and I'm having the Oprah interview. The interview's over. And when you're on radio, we just hang up. So Oprah thanked me, and then the air went dead. And I thought, oh, my God, I just had an Oprah interview. And so I was kind of excited about that. So then I get dressed, and I put my winter jacket on, and I zip it up, and I put my hat on, and then I put my knapsack on, and I buckle it up, and Sandy and I said, okay. And then all of a sudden, the producer taps on the glass, and he points to the headsets, and he said, it's Oprah. And I thought, oh, she wants to thank me, right? So remember, I'm dressed. I got a hat on. I got my jacket zippered up. I put the headset on, and I hear the jingle music. And here's what she says. We brought him in last week, and you loved him so much. He's back again today. So I was having my second interview fully dressed. <laughs> Sandy, who's was a woman, Sandy, she ended up wiping my forehead very quietly. Through, I, was, I couldn't take anything off. I couldn't buckle up. So that happened back to back. Remember, I said I wanted to do two parts when I did that. And then about a week later, I'm in Australia. I'm there for three months. I'm doing seminars. And I got a call from my assistant, who was my sister, talking about a small business. And she said, Oprah wants to interview you again. And she said, she wants you to do some call-in. She said, you were brilliant. And can you do some call-ins? I said, yes. And she said, perfect. 3 a.m. today. So, you know, the difference between Australia and Chicago. So they, Harpo Studios got a radio station to open at 3 a.m. for Michael Logia to go in to be interviewed, and they all, they were all flabbergasted. Everybody was, people came to work at 3 a.m. to be part of this whole Oprah interview. So, and it was the same thing. The very, the only thing she ever asked me outside of the interview was this question. Do you want to know people's questions before I give them to you? And I said, absolutely not. And she's good on you. And I nailed every question. <laughs> She was quoting from my book. She said, oh, I loved how you said this, and I loved how you said that. Anyway, I'm going to make my point again. I never solicited. I never sent books. I never did publicity. I never had a publicist. What else did I never do? Oh, I never doubted myself. And I made sure that I surrounded myself that had big goals and big dreams as well. Do you know people have more courage for you? than you do for yourself. I was also careful about who I told about my Oprah dreams. Some people would make fun of me. Some people wouldn't believe it. You can bet I didn't tell them twice. Was that a story or did I answer a question? I think it was a bit of both. But I think I could still receive a call from her. I got two other books. My other book, if you go to my website, I changed the link above. If you go to my website, you can click on my Your Life's Purpose book. And my book, Your Life's Purpose, will help you uncover what fulfills you. And earlier I was talking about, well, what fulfills me is influencing people. That fulfills me. What else fulfills me is intimacy. Like today, we had a lot of intimate conversations. You know what we didn't talk about? Sports, cars, and the weather. We had an intimate conversation. And my other fulfillment need is attention or attentiveness. So I can say today, working with you, helping you guys, I got these three needs met. Influencing people in a positive. Well, first, let's do a little poll. Give me a flash if I got these needs met today.